my buddy just pushed his book on me the other day, and there was this one thing I read in there, and it was it was interesting. And I, and I, I kind of explained to the guys like this, is your life is constantly being corrected. You're constantly making corrections. Like the space shuttle is a very advanced piece of machinery, or, or the rockets they send to the moon, they say, it, it's got a flight path, and it's figured in by these, these physicists and scientists. And there has to be something like 200,000 things go right at the same time to get that rocket to fly. That's amazing, that's a lot of stuff. But it's only on target 3% of the time. So it's constantly correcting itself the whole time. And that's why I tell them, so, life is ups and downs. That's my down, now I gotta get back up, you know? And it took me a while to get back up, it did, like in terms of being okay with wrestling. I still love the wrestling in the room, I enjoy it. I love wrestling, and I, I just, I do, I love it. And I would've, I would've never made it, that's why I say, like my dad and, and the way he trained me, that would never work for people. It, 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 like, it maybe works for one out of a thousand, because in the end, you have to have the right kid, like I really loved it. Like I, I wasn't done until I was 28 years old, it took me that long to wear out, you know? And I still love it to this day. Oh, it's been recording the whole time. Everything you're saying. <laughs> All right, we'll try to we'll try to get it. We'll get the shot. Here, you gotta hold it up. Let me see it. Get in here, buddy. Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. All right, get over here, right? Get on it too, so we can see. Is it got us? Selfie. <laughs> there, take it. So D was 99, and you know he's got that little duck. So I'm trying to think about which side. It was this side. And he did his little fireman's carry. So to this side? Yeah, to this side. So he he shucked in. And I don't believe it, it wasn't a three. So he hit me here. Um, and now, so we I think we went two. Oh, this is I think I remember what happened. So we went two, and then he kicked all the way over. All right. So now we're out of bounds. This way, and this is kind of actually like we scoot back. If we use this orange, this orange right here, this is the out of bounds line. Now the rule is, if this happens, my head hits, we're done. So they were trying to argue, now bump back in. <laughs> Another two, that's where he tried to score. And then he might've did that twice, but the ref had already blown the whistle. And so that's when they came back. His first initial hit, two, mm -hmm. we were out of bounds. He jumped, he tried to shove back in, but my head was out. So they reviewed it and then said, no points. You know, that's how it went down. And then, uh, then we protested, and then we re-wrestled again. I mean, you know, so again, we'll go back to this. I can't remember. All I know is we looked at it, Matt's side, I, you know, and, and they said I was out. We were out. Had they given the points, my wrestling would change again, mm -hmm. you know. And then it was uh, overturned again, so. But anyway, in Carl's book, um, there was a, a, a snapshot of, of Jimmy Carr, and he was 16 years old, made the Olympic team. So as my dad's teaching me, he's going through, and he, he goes, hey, read this, you know? And, and I was like, the guy was on the Olympic team at 16? Now here I am, I'm like nine, and I'm like, well, I don't have much time then. You know, like, I'm like, because that's where I was at, because remember, my first goal was to try to be the best ever. When people thought about wrestling, I wanted them to think about me. That was my, my goal. Um, it wasn't just winning a world title, it was what, winning multiple world titles. And so Jimmy Carr, I felt like, man, this guy's ahead of me. Now I gotta catch this guy. And so that started to propel me to say, my dad's like, man, how are you gonna do this? And then he's like, we can start jumping up in age. And that's when I started jumping up in age. I'd be nine, wrestling 13, 14. And then when I was like 12 and 13, we started wrestling open divisions and then it just happened. And then I met Nate Carr, you know, I met Jimmy's brother years later. and. And um, you know, I just I got to be around a guy like that who grew up in a family that was with so much tradition, and he would tell me the Jimmy stories. Um, but Nate was always good at saying he was better, and, and uh, you know, he was a really competitive guy. And, and um, so I got to be around those guys, and I just started wrestling anybody. And finally, when everybody else is playing the age game, well, you're at the top of your bracket this year because you're this old. I just looked at you and said, if you're the same weight, let's wrestle. But then after that, I continued to drive down to West Virginia. When I was 10 years old, he was in there training for world teams and he would let me come in and drill with him, you know? 
And then he would, this is what I loved about him, he would, he would grab you around the waist and, and, and souple you for five at 10 and 11 years old. And then he'd say, how do I feel? Do I feel pretty good? Do I feel strong? You know? like, but he wouldn't hold anything back. He would just kick the crap out of you. And I loved that. So when I was like 13 or 14 is when I entered the West Virginia Open, which was huge back at the time. I got into maybe the quarters and got beat and was competitive. And then the next year, I, uh, I had to wrestle 12 matches. It was 11 or 12 matches and wrestled the finals at 1.30 in the morning and, uh, to win it. And then when I won that, then Nate made the call to Ken Kraft, who ran the Midlands, and said, hey, I got a guy who can wrestle in the Midlands who's in high school. And he's, you know, my brother wrestled in the Midlands, and he knows it, and he wants to do the things my brother did, and, and um, they put me in it. I'll tell you, that was one of the most embarrassing times of my life because, um, you know, you've, you're a high school kid going into the Midlands. It hasn't been done since Jimmy Carr did it back in the 70s or the 80s. And, and I lost my first match. And, you know, there, and, and I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm at the Midlands with Dan Gable and, and the Brands Brothers and everybody else. And then there's an article about me in the program. And I'm like, man, like, I just want to compete. So I'm this high school kid trying to fly under the radar to some extent. Um, and then I lose my first match. And I was so upset, you know, with that, that loss. And then it was follow the leader. So if the guy who beat you, then when the next match, you were out. I'm like, I could have drove all the way out here. They got this article in this program about me. How embarrassing is this? And uh, I was, so I was praying for this guy to win. And he won. And he was a, he was a junior college guy. Um, and then I wrestled all the way back and, and beat um, Sean Charles, I believe, who was, I don't know if he was an All-American yet, he might have been. Um, then I meet, beat DeSabato, who was an All-American, um, you know, for third and fourth and took third in the Midlands is, is how it played out for me. I sat back and then I, I said, you know, what do I, what do I got to do now? What, uh, I've lost twice. Twice now I've come up short. And, and then I decided at that point, you know what, I want a red shirt. I want a red shirt is what I want to do. So I sat for about a week and a half. And, and I was a little upset too. Like, you know, you, when, you're, when you're down, you want somebody to put their hand out. Like, I don't remember getting a, a call from a coach, you know, or anything. Like, look, but you don't need that stuff. They're busy guys. Everybody's busy. But I, I didn't get a call or anything. And then one day I popped in the office and Fritz was sitting there. And Fritz was a good guy. We have a good relationship. I don't want this to come off bad at all. Um, and and um, he was sitting at his desk, and he had this little ball he sat on. This, like, ball because he, he had back problems. So he sat on one of the... He was sitting on the, uh, the, the yoga balls before anybody was doing it, you know, and he would always bounce around. And so, anyway, um, so I went in. I said, Coach, listen, I, I, I want a red shirt next year. And he just... It was the wrong time. Like he should have, he should have recognized that I was just one of his 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 top wrestlers, who was down on himself. Second was never going to be good enough for me, and, and so I'm now I'm third, um, and he just needed to recognize that. And I just think that's where he made a mistake, and um, I probably made a mistake jumping the gun too soon as well as he did. But I said I want a, I want a, a red shirt, and he says, well you don't run this team, and I didn't I didn't say it like that, and now. This is a long time ago. At least I don't remember saying it like that. Because, and, I, and I know I wouldn't have gone in and said it like that. I wouldn't have said it, I'm red shirt. 
I said, I want a red shirt. And, um, but it never got open for discussion. He tabled it and said, you don't run the team, I tell you when you red shirt. So maybe he had a bad experience. Maybe he had an athlete before that who did that to him. And that was his way of like, I'll never let that happen again. But he did it to the wrong person. Because when he said that, I said, well, basically you don't care for me. So I don't care about you anymore, you know? And, and, um, if, and, and I went to, well, if I can't red shirt, I'll transfer. And that's how it ended. I stayed around, I was around there all summer. Um, you know, had he made some phone calls to me, my parents didn't want me to leave. My dad was uh, upset when he was like, you know, you're jumping the gun and, and this stuff. I said, you don't know. You know, I was in that, but I just kind of hung up the phone. I was just mad not winning my sophomore year. I never got a call from anybody. So, you know, maybe had he called and reached out, you know, maybe that'd been a difference. I'd have probably stayed, you know, but I then started researching. So I decided to go live at Foxcatcher. I went down to Foxcatcher, enrolled in classes at the Penn State branch campus down there while I was deciding where I was gonna go and trained with Dave and John and, and all those guys. And then um, that's when things started to get crazy at Foxcatcher. And I just was like, I need to get out of here. And I went to Lock Haven. I went to Lock Haven because I looked at that team and I said, wow, these guys, there's actually a good team sitting there. And it's 30 miles from Penn State. So I can drive over 30 miles and work out with Abe. Abe can come over and work out with me. John and Russ can use can come over and work out with me. I can go over them. I mean, that's why I went there. You know, I went there for that reason. I went there for the team and, and it was close to Penn State and guys I, I knew were good partners. Now, I didn't get over to Penn State as much as I would have wanted anyway. When you get in college, you're busy, but that's how I wound up at Lock Haven. Do you guys want to go underwater with it? Sure. Let's see if we can all go underwater. Let's see if you can do a selfie underwater. Okay, I'll video okay, like, go like this underwater, right? All right, we're gonna go underwater. Ready? Okay. Ready? One, two. What I learned from everything looking back, you know, they always say like it's um, the Olympic Games is a big deal. Like I didn't set out just for the Olympics. That's what I always try to clarify. I tried to be the best wrestler in the world. I wanted to be at least the best wrestler, at least recognized one time. But when you look back, it's, um, they say it's, it's your whole life's on the line. That's that big saying with the Olympic Games, you know? And they say it's, look, if the Olympic Games was easy, it wouldn't, wouldn't mean anything. So what I learned through all this is, man, the, the, the journey from eight, like I don't know why I did this to the day. Why, why at eight that, um, that I say, this is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do it. Like, and I never got sidetracked. I never got sidetracked and then at 28, I'm like, man, I, I was there. There are very few people who can say for 20 years I didn't let anything just, you know, take me out. And, and to, do, to do that at such a young age. When you're 20, you can sit down and make a logical decision. This is what I know it's going to take to do it. I know how hard it's going to be. I know this. At 8, I didn't realize how hard it was going to be. And it kept getting harder and harder and harder. And I still never stopped. You know, that's what I said. That's what I, I, I had. I loved it. You know, I had a passion for it. As hard as it was and as many miserable days I had, I never got sidetracked from it, you know, and so I learned that about myself. Um, yeah, I, I, that was, that, that's the biggest accomplishment of all of them. My most memorable championship that I can remember is winning that, that Junior Olympics money. That was like the first road, like that was the, like the, the, that was a tough climb. I was, because I wasn't that good yet. I was eight, I was competing with ten-year-olds guys who had been wrestling since they were five, like I've been going into my third year and, um, you know, going to that junior Olympic tournament, all the older kids I trained with, nobody had ever won it. They'd always freak out when they'd get there. And then, uh, and I had to beat two guys or three guys who beat me earlier in the year to, to win it. You know, that was like my most memorable championship because that was my first real goal that I started to train for, like started to hurt for, like started to go through some serious training and some pain to get it. And then, um, you know, winning that and, 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 and jumping into my dad's arms, he was, ex he was so excited. I was so excited. Um, you know, that's, that's the most memorable championship I have to this day. Everything else was just part of trying to be great. You know, it was just process. Just, I got to get these things out of the way. Um, but that was the one that kicked it all off. Like, Omaha, like, started some goal setting, but that JO's was a, it was a big hurdle. You know, it was that first wall you had to bust through, and you could realize you could bust more walls down after that.